Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. Last time we were traversing through, I guess, the psyche of Jeremy Hartwood and came across the dark man in the library. And he seems to have found what he was looking for in there. Um, and uh, we basically spent most of the episode going from one area to another, I guess, from... Uh, I don't know, some kind of docks to where the Dark Man was having some kind of ritual um, to, um, I don't know, an ancient Egyptian tomb. Weird locations, I know. But ultimately, we're trying to break the pact between the Dark Man and Jeremy so we can save Jeremy, basically. And uh, we met up with Emily who basically thinks we're nuts, and she's not entirely wrong. So it looks like we are back in the mansion? Oh, that's where the... Right. So that was the attic area. That it does. You can't have a horror game without it, like, you know, raining and storming outside. So what's... Obsolete items have been archived. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Uh, break into Dr. Gray's office and find out what he knows. Oh, God. Now you have to assume that I know where the Dr. Gray's office is. Where Dr. Ray's apartment is. Where are we? We are. Oh, that's where we are. Can we get through there? It is barred. We are barred from going in that way. So, how do we get there then? If we go there and then we go upstairs, it looks like that's barred too. But if we come up from down there, how the f Let's just go until we find our way through. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that detective, Bella? Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. <laughs> Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. I don't get why they tr don't trust the guy who just, you know, broke his way into this place and just started aggressively asking questions and snooping around. I don't know why they don't trust me. The two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Deceto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust. Nobody. Least of all, Emily. I mean, she's the one that brought us here. Can we go this way? No, we cannot. Can we go... Uh, this way? Nope, that's not even a door. Well, it is a door, but nothing, not one we can access. Well, this play. Oh, jeez. This place has seen better days. Is this the, the rot or whatever that's growing? So that's where we went through. I don't know if it was last time, one of the times. It led us to a different area. Okay, where am I? I'm here. 
So it's just going to lead me downstairs. Christ! What the hell was that? God, do it's I want to? Well, ceiling just caved. Anyone in the bathroom? No? Alright. Anyone in here? Again, why is no one in their rooms? That was definitely not there before. Lunacy at the Astarte Artist Colony. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Panchartrin. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. Even the name Derseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, Derseto was certainly not an accident. We know that Elijah Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns, when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorsetto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorsetto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigrath is, on the other hand, very uncommon almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Udnausprechlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darseto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Darseto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor. 
as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. Okay, that was a lot of information that was just thrown at us. So, okay. For those of you that are that don't know, Shub Niggurath is actually um I believe it's a lesser god in um HP Lovecraft HP Lovecraft lore. Um as is the Necronomicon. It's Necronomicon describes um the uh, it's it's kind of like I don't want to say a memoir. It's kind of like a mix between a memoir and a biography of like this Arabian guy who basically came across like, um, you know, really dark uh, lore. Again, pertaining to the Cthulhu mythos, not Cthulhu necessarily specifically, but all the whole lore of the H.P. Lovecraft. Um. So, I, I forget what Shub Niggurath is a god of. Again, I believe he's a lesser god. They're the older gods and the lesser gods. If I'm remembering the names correctly. It's, it's been a while. Um, but it's interesting that they actually came up with that name. Like, where did they hear it from? Because this is the first time that I've noticed anyway in the game so far that we've come across anything Lovecraft related. Um, I know that the original uh, Alone in the Dark games were kind of tied to some cosmic horror stuff. I didn't know it was actually tied to Lovecraftian uh, lore. And this is the first time again that I've noticed that we've come across anything um, resembling Lovecraft. You know, Shibnigrath and uh, Necronomicon. I don't know if the other book, the Anusprechnikan Colton, I, I I apologize if I bastardized that. Um, but I don't know if that's part of it, if that's part of the lore either. This manor has huge history. I'm completely lost as to what what's happened. Um... Like it seems to have been a some kind of artist colony, a commune, a plantation, um, over like what the span of like a hundred years. Like that's a lot of history for a hundred years. And it may not seem like it in modern times, but like keep in mind back then, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, like like uh, land houses. Um, you know, they were passed on. It's not like nowadays where people move houses a lot. That didn't happen much back in the day. Like, plantations especially, they, they didn't really change hands all that much. It was basically family-owned. Maybe one person sold it to another person, but like, in the span of hun in 100 years, once, maybe twice. And even that's kind of stretching it. Not that I'm a history buff by any means, but... I mean, I, I pretty much know that much. I have no idea if I'm even going the right way. Hmm. Okay, I do not have the key for that area. Do we need to go outside? Can we go down there anymore? Oh my god, come on. And there's a note. Keep our Mrs. Secrets. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Tercetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, 
the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Tercetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Gray. Who is Mrs. Thompson again? Um... What is going on here? There we go. Thompson. Mag Magdalene Thompson, the housekeeper. Okay. Well, it looks like What is that? I like this. I like this stuff a lot. So there's something tied to this tree here. Um, what was I saying? Wow, that's a lot of artifacting. I don't know if you guys can see this. Jeez, that's a lot. Looks like it's raining glitter for me. Um, I guess it pays to kind of go back and check the areas again. Because it looks like people are just leaving documents left, right, and center. That's locked, I believe. Yep. Okay, so I guess we're going up this way. That way, yeah, someone boarded it up it's for blocked. some reason. Yeah, I, I can see that, thanks. How creepy would it be to look inside and like see some weird shit? Why does every door keep getting locked? Like, what the fuck? Dutchman. Ooh, when it makes you worse. Forbidden knowledge. What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? I think all of us have the capacity for great insanity. There must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. Open up 
Open up the safe inside the clerk's office. I don't have the combination for this. Maybe Jeremy did. In his, uh, oh. In his book? No clue, dude. Do I gotta go back up to his room then? All right, let's go check his room. You know, one time I kind of want to open the door and just have somebody be there like, what are you doing? Like as a jump scare, you know? What's up? Oh, man. Yeah, it's, that's just tragic. You look worse and worse every time, buddy. Jeremy, let's see if you're hiding anything here. Hey, look at that. A document that wasn't there before is there now. To Detective Carnby. Detective Carnby, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. Cursed. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. Take her back to New Orleans. Sincerely, Jeremy. New Orleans. Well, you wouldn't have a, happen to have a code for the safe now, would you? You failed me for the last time, Jeremy. Who's back there? Right. Well, that's blocked off. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. Oh. Why well, could not go back? All right, let's let's slow our pace a little. Let's let's take a look around. So now that's unlocked, we can get back to the stairwell if we need be. Let's check the other patients' rooms first. Actually, we're gonna be. Are we gonna go back that way? You never know. Never know where the day may lead us. Let's check this out first. Where did this lead again? Private entry. Do not disturb. Prisoner of ice. I think Dr. Gray might be in there. Perfect time to snoop around his office then. Oh, Dr. Gray. Dr. Gray, sir. Trying to get in. Can you let me in, please? Nope. Must be sleeping. So where was his office? Can't even get in there. Some tells me when I go back to uh, 
uh, Elisabetta Perosi's room. She's not going to be there. It was Elisabetta, I believe, right? Trust me. Brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. Man. Oh, there's a lot of lag. Oh my god. What is going on? I'm so sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened there. Looks like we're okay now. This game is super buggy. <gasps> bullets! How did I miss bullets? Oh, go figure. Her room's locked. What do you know? Let's see what's going on across here. Oh, hi. Detective Conby. Good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, it be great. What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something's different. I think we all feel it. Besides. We got ourselves some new words for the prayer, thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and the things fuck are you will wearing? begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace! Stay put for once. McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Grace. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember but couldn't. There's something missing. Yeah, is it a country? Uh, where do these places go again? Well, I mean, let's check them one by one. Okay, nothing in there. Sandra's Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Convenient. Yeah, we already did all that. Ooh. 
movie script. Slaughter Gulch. Scenario by Cassandra Beauregard. Send copy to Mr. Sh Charlotte. Oh, we could open it. Wait, I thought we could. Is that a lany? I don't think it was. Oh, yes, it was. All right. What do you? Oh, there's something on the floor. A key. First floor hall key. I better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. Definitely not. All right, Grace. What the fuck are you doing in here? Can I use the key? I already grabbed the jack in the box. Do 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 do. gonna go through here. Actually, before we do that, we should go into the clock's office and procure what is safely hidden in the combination safe. For safekeeping. What was that, 913? be like trapped with like a shotgun like just right in the face blows up dr gray's office key cool and a clue. the last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption i must write this down because if i understand the condition sufficiently it could make me deny this fact at a later date and there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Okay. If this game's implying what I think it's implying, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me right now. Why am I going back up here? Um, is this game implying that the person that the guest in the third room is us like it's Carmby because he's trying to lead us there he's trying to give some kind of revelation are you no no kidding me So he's leading us in there. We've never been down there, have we? No, we have not. 
Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Keeping bullets in your drawer? Test, test. Sometimes. I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Yeah, I mean, you're probably not wrong. Let's check Ruthie's room. Going through our unmentionables. Okay, I gotta rewatch my footage, but it looked like there was a document like sitting right there. Like where my light is shining. When I was behind here. And as I came closer, it just disappeared. I'll, I'll have to rewatch the footage, but that was fucking weird. Maybe it was the light shining? Like the thunder? I don't know. Or the th lightning, rather. Not the thunder. Okay, so absolutely nothing in here. Okay. Let's unlock this. Let's check out room number three. There you go. I belong here. I recognize this view. Why is the scenery changed? There's a storm outside. Now it's daylight. See, I was right. This is, uh, they're implying that we were the, we were the, we're the I missing guests. I know the combination. I carry it with me. Carry it with you. Dagger swath in the grip of two sleek snakes, found buried in the sunken temple along with the Dark Man's contract. Um, the empty room always felt familiar. It had a mild fragrance of crushed leaves and wet sand that somehow convinced visitors that they belonged. It wasn't real, of course, but it was more real than many other things you could find. Okay, so is it that one nine nine one nine six six nine two? 
196692. Um, then we can try what is main March, April. So 5, 15, 19, 30. Oh, there's no zero. And maybe we could try that date as well 23rd of June. So six twenty three one nine three zero. These are all the numbers that I know of that he carries with him. Uh, so one nine. Six, six, nine. Holy shit. An old coin from the time when Louisiana was a Spanish colony. the girl detective i have made many discoveries in my case the child we want is safe thanks to good people like me and you we're so similar but you don't see all the things i do to find your man jeremy you also need to look for the girl it has always been that way the young deliver us all you should have a look in my room there's a piece of the puzzle you will need. Take care now. My coffee. How long have I been here? Look at his eyes, Jesus. It's terrifying. The fuck, man. Okay. I have another theory, and if I'm right, I feel like this game is becoming a little too cliche. Um, are the other residents here part of Carmby's psyche? Like, they're not really there, he's just hallucinating them, trying to sort shit out. Oh, if I'd just done this, I would have known. I know that number. Where's that from? I did this. I wrote that. Can't believe I didn't recognize you. Is any of this real? So is he even really a private eye? If that's the case. the familiar numbers. I mean, I did. Fuck, that! I kind of break the game by doing it backwards? Oh, well, it's fine. So what's our connection to the Dark Man, then? Do we make the pact? Or are we part of the pact? See, now the... The storm is back. Okay, where is Hartwood's office? Or uh, Dr. Hartwood, Dr. Gray's office. Um, oh, it was right there. Um, and there's another puzzle that I missed? I don't think I missed anything. So I'm just going to check here real quick, because it says I missed something. Was it in here? Oh. Wait. Oh, that's Dr. Gray's office. That's how you get in there. Okay. 
and then that's done. I guess it's just not updating properly. The empty room always felt familiar. It had a mild fragrance of crushed leaves and wet sand that somehow I've, I've read this one already. Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Conway decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the dark man to manipulate and torture Jeremy, or the dark man was an actual powerful being possessing Jeremy. And in that case, Dr. Gray was simply a student. Maybe both could be true at once. Combi felt his mind racing in all directions. No matter what, he had to find a way to break the pact. That was what Jeremy said was needed. It didn't even matter what was true or not. If Jeremy wouldn't leave De Seto before the contract was broken, then Combi had to make it happen. He just wished the steps on the contract made a little more sense. Sorry, I just went back to what's his name's room. He said there was something here. There it is. It's in the it's like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Ah. Missing picture. Why would McCarthy lock this up? Was he trying to keep Grace from completing the shape? If so, couldn't she have just made another drawing? Sorry, I, I wanna... Oh my god. I wanna check one more thing. right there I, I want to look through this uh, the contract again okay I have a th I have another theory. With no oh jeez, which I'm gonna keep to myself for now because I don't want to potentially spoil anything. Uh, for those of you that are still trying to guess what's going on, I I'm still trying to guess. What what's the going hell on. happened in here? You mean out here? Oh no, it isn't here. But I do have a theory. Already have a weapon. These guys are getting much harder. They're getting them more difficult to kill. Oh, this is still the house.
Oh, jeez. guys are there Jesus is that a whole bunch of them up there oh my god The more I think about it, I think the more my theory makes sense. Oh, we have to move these around. Maybe. I think that goes there, yeah. there, I think. No, I think that goes here. Yeah. No. That goes there. That goes there. This goes here, maybe? No. Sorry, guys. I'm going to just turn off this light for a minute. Get the freaking light. Sorry, just for a minute. Just so I could fucking see. That looks like it goes there. That does not look like that. That looks like this. there. Oops, that goes there and that that can't go there. That goes there and that has to go there. There we go. I'm sure it'll tell me. The fuck? Oh, there's a door. Well,
This looks familiar. He was back in the French Quarter. His office, to be exact. A place Jeremy had certainly never seen. It could only mean that the dark man had reached inside Edward's mind and conjured this place for him to suffer. How am I back at the office? Jeremy's never been here. That's me, isn't it? How long had it been since I drowned myself in drink and depression? It all felt so peaceful, slipping away into oblivion. A welcoming dark voice wrapped around my mind like a heavy blanket. It turned off suddenly as I woke up from the sound of my office door closing shut. A messenger had left a telegram from Mrs. Saunders. She had a lead on where to find her husband and her kidnapped daughter. Telegram from Gabriela Saunders sent December 25th, 1928. My husband has returned to steal one of our more va our most valuable paintings. I'm sure he means to sell it. If you hurry, I'm sure you can track him down. God, I used to drink so much back then. When was this exactly? What case was I working? Actually, what year was this? 28. So this was basically two years ago. Why would you put the writing desk key there and not in your pocket? Crumbled newspaper clipping from December 23rd, 1928. Philanthropist Teddy Saunders goes mad, kidnaps child. Picayan Post. Is there more? There is. Photograph. Photograph of a man. Teddy Saunders. Mr. Saunders says her husband has stolen a painting and means to sell it. Okay. Headline, the little toy shop burglarized, photograph of the kidnapper. Basin Street. Stamp reads Basin Street portraits. Oh, that's what I want, yeah. Check I don't know in this help. case. Some kid got taken by her father, headed out of state, but he had made a mistake by selling a painting that his wife actually cared about to a collector named Thornhill to fund his venture. That's how I tracked him down. At least I think so. Conby vaguely remembered the case of the missing child. She was kidnapped by her estranged father. There was some connection to a gallerist named Thornhill. A painting sold to pay for a getaway. Okay. So what does this have to do with what we're currently doing? Those are seagulls. Great, we're gonna encounter monsters here again. Shoe birds. Slowly crepping up on you. Okay. 
go in there in a minute. Just gonna look around first. I can't go that way. None of, none of them actually ring like a normal bell. Thornhill wasn't a bad man, but he had principles keeping him from handing out information about his deals. So he needed some convincing. Bet he did. Well, every case can't be squeaky clean. That went right in my mouth as I was speaking it. It's like not every case can be exempted. <laughs> Does those say 30 bills or 20 bills? No, they're 20s. That's a lot of 20s in there. Only a few uh, change. Don't mind if I do. Mr. Saunders had sold a valuable painting to Thornhill, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. I felt myself falling into the painting, only being brought back by Thornhill, thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hand, and asking me to get the hell out. I don't remember this at all, but I can't say it didn't happen. The kidnapper had sold a painting to Thornhill, the collector, to pay for a car and enough gas to get out of Louisiana. Detective Comby was suddenly reminded of shaking him down to find out where the kidnapper was hiding. St. George's Hotel by the park. At the statue. Oh, hi. Miss me, bitch. Figured I'd use bullets instead of uh, the am the melee because we're pretty much maxed out on bullets. Snick. What if I don't want a snick? Dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it. Dun la 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 la. Okay, how close can I get to these guys? Just uh, Metal Gear my way through. Metal Gear Sneak. Mr. Saunders had sold a valuable painting to Thornhill, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to 
call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. I felt myself falling into the paint, only being brought back by Thornhill, thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hand and asking me to get the hell out. I don't remember this at all. The kidnapper had... But I can't say it didn't happen. Oh my goodness. I am so surprised. Can't follow me. I'd be very snicker. Be sticking my way far from the enemies. Oh, I will follow his path. I will follow him. The bell clears everything. Uh, hello? Well, fuck. Can I, can I push through here? How can I not push through there? Like, you really gotta make me go through this fucking park here. Parking set. Looks like someone's got one of those like DJ pads. Like, woof, 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 woof. Gee, I hope no monsters just suddenly pop up and attack me. I'm all alone in the dark. Now, how does one get out of said park? Guys, I think I'm lost in the park. Even though it's the smallest park you can think of, I think I'm lost. I I literally cannot. I I just cannot. 
Wow, 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 wow. Oh my god, guys. Just follow the cord. Follow... replace the one bullet I lost. Um, okay, so that was a dead end. On my way to the hotel, the morning gang caught up with me. I owed them money, a lot of them. I can't remember what for, probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out, and I sent the others packing. It was a stupid move. That was fun. Who's up bullets? Fuck you. Fuck you. Welcome again. Willkommen. Fuck you. I think you went in the wrong way. Curious napkin. Oh, the world's a stage. No one ever comes back. No one ever responds. Hotel Bill. Hotel Bill did December 21st, 25th. So we have a single room, dinner, and a telegram. Twelve bucks. God damn. Dinner for three nights was a dollar fifty. It just goes to show, man, like if you got like ten thousand dollars and you go back to like the nineteen thirties, you'd live like a fucking king. 12 bucks for almost a week for a room and dinner for most of those nights. 
shit, man. Oh, shotgun shells are full. Lovely. How about pistol bullets? You got any of those? I found it. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting of the signature. Ted Stryker. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Oh, I'm hurrying. I'm a-getting. I'm a getting. that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. Feels vaguely familiar. Yeah, it, it's the per the perp you caught. Guess he goes there. Okay, <laughs> nothing else. I recognize this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them. But where? Business card. David Thornhill's business card. Fine Arts Gallery. Third Avenue West, New Orleans. New Orleans. Number 705. Number 705. Oh, I'm supposed to pick stuff up and put it there. Doi. Key item. Telephone directory. Page draw from the telephone directory of businesses. DeWitt boarding school. Mr. DeWitt. It's from Bioshock Infinite. For those that don't know. Deserto Sanatorium. New Orleans, Louisiana. That's what we want. $350 for the Kingsport painting. Do it contract. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? That's oh, yeah. right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? Depending on what may have, depending on what happens here, I may give out my theory. I may elaborate on my theory. So that's the bridge. Let me just go back down there real quick, see if I missed anything. Is this with the bullets and the profane totem butts against the horns and its head becomes entangled extra credit for those who get that reference
I think I said go butts against the horns. Let's go butts against the edge. And its horns become entangled. Ha, indeed. Oh no. It was her all along. Oh my god. I was wrong. It was Earth all along. I can't believe I didn't recognize her. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. I mean, is any of this real? How do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't. I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. That's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again, then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself. I'm down there with him, remember? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car. Conby had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. He could have saved him. There was time. He just chose not to. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. Okay. So, this was my theory that I don't want to say. Um, all these characters are... It, it seems pretty obvious they're all in his head. They're, they're not real. Um, even, even Emily Hartwood. I don't know why... I don't know where all these other people come in. Um, but the reason I think that is because when we first entered the mansion... or The manor, sorry, I keep calling it the mansion. When we got confronted by the housekeeper, um, there were three people that came down. It was Ruth, McCaffrey, and the little girl. Um, and... They all spoke. Now, it's possible that we could have just been hallucinating the girl, the little girl. But if that's the case, McCaffrey's supposed to be looking after the girl, right? The little girl. Grace. Um, if we never, if we had never seen them together, that would have been a different matter entirely. We would have assumed it was Grace. But we saw her... Uh, we saw him like look after her when she was like in the other room drawing. He spoke to, her. excuse me, he spoke to her, which leads me to believe if he can see her, and Grace is just a figment of uh, Carmi's imagination, McCaffrey's also got to be uh, part of his imagination. And a lot, and pretty much a lot of people have been, uh, uh, like talking about McCaffrey, saying like seek him out, blah blah blah. So, if they assume, if they acknowledge his existence, that means everyone's got to be part of his hallucination. Even uh, th that's why I'm even thinking Emily Hartwood. 
because she's going around saying like, oh, she talked to this person, she talked to this person. Um, even Dr. Gray, I, I, I'm guessing even he's a hallucination. Beyond that, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. I don't know if the Dark Man is just... Um, his... Um, sorry, we'll fly. I don't know what the Dark Man is part of. I was going to say part of his like guilt or something, but I... Or his... Um, his search for the truth to sort everything out. I'm assuming maybe the Dark Man is... I don't think it's him per se, but I, I think it's someone significant in his life that's all masked up. Again, my just purely a guess entirely. I have no idea. I don't know if there's anything actually supernatural going on. There, there very well could be. Supernatural mixed up with, with his psyche. With all his uh, mania going on. I have no idea. But then that brings up a different question. If everyone's a part of his mind, a part of his uh, uh, psyche, like a part of his mania, then how can we get to play as Emily later on? I don't know. can't go that way again all pure speculation on my part I'm most likely wrong now that I think more about it but there's some things that just make sense Looks like everyone carries bullets, eh? Go, go, go. This must be where the bridge is operated. Must it? Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back. Is it this thing clicking in and out of existence? everything hunched over. Why can't I not attack with the thing? Okay, I can't attack these things. I'm going to put the lever back. Fight off. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Why can I not... Why can I not grab this? Pick these up. <sighs> this must be where the bridge is operating. Like 
like something's holding it back. I still cannot pick these up. And now I'm stuck on top of the box. Wait, what the? Why can I not grab these? Oh, now I have a fucking weapon. What is going on? Say that was annoying is putting it mildly. Don't think I was. Can't go that way. 
What? Wait, this is where I came from. All right, did I just do another big fucking circle? For fuck's sake. I can't even go back. one eh and I'm back here for what purpose there's nothing in here okay so that room was purely to throw us off been doing what's going on here look at this mess uh, I, i'm sorry mrs thompson don't make me kick you out of this house now get out <sighs> hey detective mr carnby i'm really worried about you i'm okay i just need to catch my breath for a moment This place, it's, there are some very disturbed figures around here, and I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I wanna know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. We haven't even gone into his office yet. Own up to your awful past. The dark man had forced Combe to face his memories of Grace and her father. How he ran him off the bridge at Pearl River and carried on to steal his child as he was drowning. 
He then handed Grace off to her mother because that was the job, and you don't question the job. You take the money and get drunk. As Conby slowly accepted his trauma, he started to wonder why it was his and not Jeremy's. Sorry, I haven't said anything in a while. It's... Again, I'm just trying to process stuff. What the fuck is the point of these? Like, there better be some kind of payoff with those. So, I wonder if what we did was actually optional. Um, yeah, I'm crazy. Right. I feel like that whole segment was completely optional. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. France. Interesting. Okay. McCarthy's private treasure. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. My favorite young? Oh, is that inside? Oh, okay, okay. I, I think that was in his room. Um, the, the painting that we found inside the vent. So I think we were meant to come here first. Before we went to um, stairwell key, Jeremy's treatment. Before we went into um, uh, the whole Louisiana, like before we took care of like the paint and the drawings, I think we're supposed to come here. Dearest Doctor Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground. 
that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. All right, something tells me the fact that he, um, whoever this guy is, the fact that he keeps saying the patient, my patient, the patient, I think he's talking about Edward, Edward Carnby. Wow, it's really coming down out there, eh? Okay, so now where do we go? Look for Jeremy's x-ray plates in the infirmary. He says Jeremy, but I think it's actually... Carnby's. Um... I don't know what door I can unlock. Doesn't even show what what door anymore. Oh, infirmary's over there. How the fuck do I get there? Um. Oh, it's through the stairwell. I see, above the grand parlor. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Oh. Close off, eh? Oh no, this way worked. Uh huh. I can't take this much more. This has to end. Take the money, no one will know. No one's here. Shaker. Sorry, guys. The game keeps on freezing every now and then, and I and I don't know why. Let's do that first. Let's do the France thing first. Fuck. That takes me to the attic, right? Alright guys, I'll be right back. Okay. Let's put France back in There's a something spot. missing. I have a Caribbean. I need. Oh. All that just for that. Okay, let's see what horrors lurk below. Okay. 
scapegoat. Okay, unspeakable cults. Der Seto stands on a breeding ground for the grotesque, a temple devoted to rebellious growth, the most ugly and cancerous side of nature. You may be able to shield your psyche for a while, but rest assured your soul will come to pray to that hideous god in time. That is the story of every man and woman who gather around that ancient arbor. They all croak, bark, and bleat because their own bodies are afraid and they wish to repel the evil those words conjure. Ia! Ia! Instead of that blasphemous name, they gossip in hush whispers the name of their seto, Astarte, and the Black Goat of the Woods. Black Goat of the Woods, eh? So, yeah, yeah, is uh, normally what's... I can't tell where the voices are coming from. just replaying it now okay i was gonna say yeah yeah is usually followed by cthulhu Fatag. uh nobody knows what it means but it's a very famous uh infamous quote from uh i believe it's mountains of madness radiography patient jeremy hartwood date june 14 1930 plates Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations. Even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Uh, the good old days where lobotomies fixed everything. Just an eye pick right in the middle of the... Not in the middle of the eye, but in the corner of the eye swish around and pull out everything's good if all else fails hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhardt and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions the procedure would be brutal in performance as well as in efficiency an ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. 
The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. Yeah. Brutal shit, man. Brutal fucking shit. Radiograph key item two. Partial capture of a brain grimed by unsettling darkness. Surgery room key. Guess we need some kind of lever or a fuse. There's a fuse. This spare fuse can help regulate electro power when inserted into a fuse box. Thanks, man. I guess I need more. I need three more, it looks like. Okay, I can dig it. A radio. The fuse. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, we we heard enough of that. Radiograph one, key item. Okay. So we need one more part of the radiograph. I thought, anyway. Guess not. But there's only... I only found one fuse. Is there supposed to be another one? Dr. Gray had been putting Jeremy through some thorough medical investigation. He was trying to break through Jeremy's stories and get to some truth, just like Combi was. Could Dr. Gray have been trying to break the contract as well? Leave an offering at the Whispering Tree. Oh, there's the other one. Oh, one of these things is not like the other. So that looks like I can't rotate anymore. I think that one's right.
That is definitely not right. I don't even know if that's right, man. Something doesn't seem right here. Has to be this one. Maybe. But that's not right either. Has to be this one. Oh, there you go. Jeremy's darkness. Key item. What the fuck? Broken piece of burned clay. The size suggests being a part of a statue. Statue is in like in the landing upstairs. And we're back here. Well, perfect time to have a look around this place. Is it? Oh, man. Oh, great. Another puzzle. I can't rotate them. I had it. 
There we go. Use the talisman to open up Jeremy's mind. Before I do that. What is that? It's a drink. Tessellated shard. realize that's a noose. Thing transformed to a noose. Well, I can't do anything with it. Be sure it transformed to a noose. It did not transform to a noose. I'm just an idiot. Six, four, and one. Six, four, there you go. Now I can interact with the noose. Now I can't even interact with it. Seriously, on the entrance of the world. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I just need to exit. Nope, can't even exit. Oh man. I'm just gonna open a window. Okay. What the fuck? Can I move, please? So why can I not interact with this now? Is there another noose? Something up there. I'm going to shoot that. I did not mean to do that. No. down. No, is this? This is where Jeremy's hiding, right? Hello? Is anyone there? Jeremy? I need help! Wait, can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking Jeremy, me. where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something I out. I'll move. get the boat running. Jeremy was calling out for help, but Condi couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. For a moment, Condi wondered if the boat itself was Jeremy, 
or if he was below it somehow. It didn't matter right now. Jeremy was clear on one thing. He wanted Conby to get the steamboat running and out of the mud. Conby entered some new, mucky dreamland of Jeremy's, a long-abandoned steamboat aground in the bayou. All right, guys, I'm actually going to call it here, um, just because I'm actually getting very tired. Uh, I wanted to wait till the end of the chapter, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um most likely next episode will probably be a bit of a long one. Um, just in case there's like, I don't know, 20 minutes left on the chapter. Uh, I might just continue on and uh, finish chapter 5. I don't know how many chapters there are in each campaign. Um, but I can't imagine there's too much left, in all honesty. I... There is a lot of padding in this game. Like, a lot of padding. Um, there's a few places we could have done without, or shortened them, you know what I mean? But I'll, uh, I'll leave my, my thoughts for, for, for like, uh, when the game ends. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.